Hello guys, welcome back to Makeup and Storytime. Today I'm going to be talking about the time I got scammed while working at a K-pop concert, specifically at some town concert. This person that was in charge of the concert also got criminally accused by so many people and I did not know that when this was happening and the story is crazy. But anyway, also, you guys ever want to work at a K-pop concert or fan meeting? What to do and not to do when it comes to Korean celebrities? And also I've toured around foreign countries countries like Europe. You guys know I've been everywhere in Europe and I had the most amazing staff with me and just want to share if you guys ever become like a K-pop staff member, there's certain things that um, you should know definitely. And like always, I work on these videos with my heart and passion so it takes a free second and a like to just hit the like button. It goes a long way just to work the YouTube algorithm so I can continue making these fun juicy story times for you guys. One of my favorite skincare that I'm using which is Dear Claire's Watery Drop. You guys have the driest desert skin like me during the winter this is amazing now this story happened a long time ago this happened in i think 2011 or 2012 so this was when i first got into my first year of college and then my mom knew someone at her church that knew someone that was doing the sm town concert in new york city this was like one year before i actually became a trainee in korea so i was like doing anything and everything that i can to possibly look for any opportunities to get close to any korean entertainment people so when she said SM, I was like, hell yeah. Long story short, there was a woman named, let's call her L. Her name was L, and she was gonna be the person in charge of bringing SM entertainment. So basically, she's like an event coordinator. She's in charge of getting, like, I guess, the venue, the location, hotels, and arranging pretty much everything for SM. So it was like a month or some time before the concert, and she just wanted to see me and interview me before, like, picking her staff members. I also brought one of my friends to come with me, and she was also gonna work at the concert. So she is a witness to all of this craziness. Elle invited us to come and meet her at this Korean chicken place. So we went and for the first time I met Elle. She seemed pretty chill, you know? I mean, she was like really down to earth feeling at first. She was really funny. She talked a lot about how she knew all the entertainment systems and people that she knew. She was like, oh, I know these people. I know Isuman. Yeah, the actual SM CEO. You know, when he comes, he's gonna be here too. So I'm gonna take you to the VIP room and introduce you to him. She made all of these promises, like kind of fell for it. I was so young. I was like 18, 19 years old. And at that age, when you're desperate to be in that kind of entertainment system, you fall for anything that anyone says. She also said that she had her own entertainment company and that she was also creating this K-pop academy where you basically kind of pay to train like a K-pop star. The biggest thing that she promised was that we are going to be paid $100 per day for the work that we do. Also, the main thing was that we are going to be hired as translators, as translators for the SM Town artist. I clearly remember my friend was there too, her asking me, Who is your favorite artist in SM? And I said, TVXQ, Dong Bang Seungi was one of my favorite singers. And I was like, Oh my god, it would be like a dream to translate for them. And that's the whole reason why we were hired because we were Korean and we were supposed to translate and help. And here's another tip you guys know that K pop is like international now, and there's so many artists coming to your country. I get so many comments about how do you learn Korean? easily and this amazing app is Rosetta Stone I've talked about them before and this is a really great app if you guys want to learn Korean or any other languages and yes this video is also in collaboration and sponsored by Rosetta Stone when you want to work in Korean industry you don't just want to learn 안녕하세요 제 이름은 그레이스입니다 it's boring you really want to learn pronouns grammar conversational pronunciation listening and reading Rosetta Stone is really interesting because they do not give you the clues in English so it makes you learn a lot faster again Again, I always say invest one hour a day to learn something and if you guys want to learn a language one hour a day It goes a long way. My favorite part is where you speak back and they actually check your pronunciation to see if you got it All right, Rosetta Stone is really different than any other language learning apps that I've seen Rosetta Stone also has a lifetime subscription meaning you only pay once and that's it You have a lifetime of learning these languages So remember to click the link down below to try Rosetta Stone and you guys could get the lifetime subscription to learn as many times as you want a really great opportunity to learn Korean so anyway, I was just so excited that I was gonna translate and be next to you know 
amazing artists. Yes, and another tip, if you guys are ever going to be working at these concerts, remember to not act as a super fan. Don't ask them for pictures or videos or take secret cameras behind unless like the whole concert or fan meeting is over. When I went touring to the foreign countries, like I've been to Poland, Germany, Russia, if you guys ever were for these concerts and fan meetings, what I personally loved about staff was that they really taught me about their culture. They taught me about what Sweden was like, what Germany was like. Learning about the culture and people, I really appreciated and that's how I got close to a lot of the staff members there. So if you guys do ever want to get close to these artists that come and travel, remember to like talk about the culture and they'll really appreciate it. It was three days before the concert and I remember we were all called to go to a specific hotel. The artists and staff arrived from Korea from the airport and we were in charge of first giving keys out to the artists. And I remember I was called to give keys to FX and I met Luna. It was literally a second but I remember I met FX Luna and she was super nice. She was like, thank you. I was super nervous. It was like the first time ever seeing like a Korean celebrity and I was hyperventilating. And we ended up pretty much helping out with the luggage of the staff members and like bringing the luggage up. Which okay, like I guess we aren't translating, we're just the luggage people. It's so funny because there was this one staff member, I think she was like a really high person in SM. And I had to take her luggage and take her to her hotel room. And she asked me, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 19. And I was like, is she gonna ask me to audition or not? Girl, I'm here for that. <laughs> but she didn't ask me. But it's just funny me looking back at myself at that age and like what was going through my head. From then, like something was a little odd because nothing was really organized. I just remember like we staff, were kind of like left to do nothing much. But anyway, that day went by and it was the second day, you know, the day before the concert. I remember the day before the concert, we were called to go to Madison Square Garden, which is where the SM Town concert was supposed to happen. Now this was a day where it was exhausting. Where is the translation part? We weren't translating for anybody. We were basically called to do all the back work. Like I remember we were counting merch. I don't know what the reason is, but the SM staff and us, our staff was made to literally count Count every single merch that was there. And let me tell you guys, there's thousands of these merches. Like there was like 10 stuff counting one of them and when we messed up and when we got out of track of how many was there, we had to start all over again and that took like hours and hours and we were like yelled at. Well not yelled at, but there was like a staff member who didn't like us. We had to make these like badges that all access staff badges. We had to like laminate them by hand. And I remember we got off of work that day like around 2 a.m. or something. Third day, which was the day of the official SM Town concert live in New York City. Again, there was something going on behind the scenes that we could tell that wasn't like going smoothly And I don't know, it was just a disaster that day Like nobody knew why they were there They weren't there to do what they were supposed to do Or what they were hired to do Anyway, eventually it became time for the concert And yay, the concert started Me, as a person that really wanted to get into K-pop I was like, I need to go to the VIP concert room And have someone find me Be recognized by someone at the VIP room I went upstairs, was at the VIP room And I was like, a bummer because remember Elle promised that she was gonna send me to Yisuman's room introduce me to him and I was like waiting and then she I saw her multiple times and then she didn't say anything but at the same time I was like she's probably super busy she can't keep up all the promises that she promised me because she has to do her job so I was in the lounge places I wasn't actually in the VIP booth hall and then that's when I see someone that I recognize and he was like a CEO of a back then a very famous agency for actors oh my god the I'm seeing someone that I knew in Korea in New York so this was like a coincidence anyway long story short he took me to his VIP room and I got to watch the concert like literally like a VIP and I remember in that VIP room Kuara was there and those other staff members I think they were really high up because you know they were talking to each other very formally there's also um, extra merch in that room for all the VIP guests and he's like I don't need it so you take it all so I had like four bags of merch for my friends and myself so it was a really nice great ending and he was really kind and I really thank him for giving me that VIP experience like a little cherry to the top so after the concert we went home and it's been a couple weeks I'm contacting and they're not contacting me like where is the payment and they were keep pushing back the payment pushing back pushing back sometimes Elle didn't even respond
come back to me. A while later, I told my mom that I'd never got paid. My mom told my mom's friend who told her, Elle. This is the part where it starts to get crazy. So basically, my mom's friend who talked to Elle said that she did not want to pay us because that I told her that I will not work if I don't translate for Dongbangshinggi. I've never said that. I have my friend here as a witness. She's the one who brought it up first about who we want to translate for and I said jokingly TVXQ, I like it. And she said all these other excuses about why that we shouldn't be paid. Eventually, she said I'll come down to her office somewhere in Manhattan and she'll pay us. You know, at that, that age, at that time, I've never really met like a psychological liar when I was working with someone. So I didn't really know. I was like, okay, maybe she took me wrong. You know, I don't know. I just want to get paid. So I went to her office and she wasn't there, but it was like a small office in a nice building and she had two other staff members working there. They handed us the envelope with the payment in it and we were like, thank you. But I was like, let me check how much is in here. Hold up. I open up the envelope. Me and my friend opens up the envelope and guess how much was in there? A hundred dollars. Yo, like, we were supposed to be paid $100 a day. We worked for three days exactly. And at that moment, we couldn't do anything because she wasn't there. I was bummed. We went through three days of work. We were in school. We didn't do any other work. My mom's friend told Elle, and again, she gave weird excuses of why she did not want to pay us. We decided to just not take the money and just end it right there. After that, I found out that there's a whole website dedicated to this person trying to send her to jail because she later ended up scamming 20 to 30 victims out of about over $200,000. So later, I heard that she started her own K-pop training academy where you pay to train, I guess, in hopes that you become a K-pop trainee. And apparently, she was charging these people about five to $7.5 thousand dollars for a six-week program. Now, according to a lot of these victims that wrote online she was on the news and everything and she canceled the training two days prior to this k-pop academy she had um they never got the money back there was also a lot of testimonies where she scammed people for travel businesses if her friends buy plane tickets through her she can get it for cheap there's testimonies of her former staff not paying her dancers she also scammed undocumented koreans to invest in her company for legal status coaches tutors borrowing money from minors promising people free k-pop tickets and just all these things that basically I went through in a very, very tiny speck compared to these people. I don't know what happened after this. Um, I don't know if she was convicted. I don't know what happened, if these victims got their money back. Let me just give you some tips on how to find scammers or people that you should definitely not be working with. I'm gonna be trying this new lipstick by Pony Effect called the Powdery Whisper Lips. There's a lot of people who are gonna say we worked with these people, we did this and that. Because at the end of the day, it's not really about who they work with. It's really really about are they professional are they going to pay you on time what is the actual contract about this mm -hmm. this is the type of lips that i like it's very glossy very um plump and juicy looking ask that person that event coordinator how many days are you exactly gonna work and are you going to be paid hundred dollars exactly every single day i know in korea it's totally illegal to record conversations for legal evidences look up the laws in your country and if you could record things put it down on paper emails text messages whatever evidence that you could get make sure that if these company that you work with at least once are not professional such as they are late in payment or don't pay you or they're neglecting their staff members don't work with them the second time at least i'm um, thank god i stopped there maybe if i started talking to her again promised me this and that and she has all these connections to these people it was all lies it was all bs but anyway guys just like that if you guys want to learn some korean so that in the future you can work with the k-pop stars and they do come to your country rosetta stone is a really awesome app that you guys could use to learn a new language. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in my next video.